Hi everyone, Michael from Bullion Now, bullionnow.com.au. So it's been a while since I've got up on my soapbox and, um, and done a mini rant, but here we are. And what's triggered it is a, a conversation I was listening to this morning uh, on my way to work about uh, the state of the building industry in Australia. Now, no, I'm not hanging myself out there as an expert in the building industry. Absolutely not. But there were some incredible comparisons that I could draw from the, what the commentators were saying in regards to the building industry and what actually occurs in the bullion industry and why it's important to you as an investor, a stacker, a collector, particularly if you have an ongoing relationship with your bullion dealer. So if you have um, stuff stored with your bullion dealer or uh, you, know, you, just, you buy and sell quite frequently from them or you, know, you have uh, an investment in their unallocated program or their pool allocated program or anything along those sort of lines. It's, it's really important that you discuss, uh, sorry, that, well, yeah, discuss it with your bullion dealer, but you understand what your bullion dealer should and should not be doing. All right, so let's go back to the start. What's occurring in the building industry in Australia, from what I'm understanding, and again, I'm not an expert in it, is that a lot of the, uh, a lot of the building uh, companies have gone out there and they've sold these houses. We'll, we'll build your house for, let's say, $300,000, $400,000. We'll build you this house for $400,000, sign on the dotted line, and it'll take us 12 months, 18 months to get to it. In the meantime, what's occurred is that the, um, the cost of the building materials, so lumber, transport, um, steel, and we all know all these costs have gone through the roof since uh, you know, the last 12 months or so and are accelerating in their, in their journey upwards. And so these, these builders are now in a situation where they've locked in their sale price, X amount, but their supply price for their product is now um, pushing it to a point where they're, it's uneconomical to build a house and they're walking away from it. Very, very similar things can happen in the bullion industry. Now, no, I'm not trying to trivialise what's going, sorry, yeah, in the bullion industry. And no, I'm not trying to trivialise what's happening in the building industry. It's, it's very sad and it's unfortunate, but it very, very, very much highlights what happens on our side of the fence as well. Let me give you an example. So let's say we sell um, 200 kilos of silver, um, and I'm just going to make up some imaginary numbers. So we sell 200 kilos of silver, spot price is $900 Australian per kilo, and the premium, the manufacturing premium over and above that is another $50. So we've sold it to you, um, our customers at $950 each. Now I need to restock those 200 kilos, otherwise I have to shut the doors and go out of business. So if I don't lock it in immediately at that spot price and I say leave it for a day or two, let's say this sale occurs on a Friday and I go, no, I'm having a big weekend, I'm walking away from work, I don't want to touch anything until Monday morning, I'm going to restock on Monday morning. So I wander out into the market Monday morning, I source 200 kilos, but spot price has moved over that Friday night, Saturday, and now I'm paying $1,000 a kilo, um, to, to, uh, to purchase those items back again. I bring them into the store and as invariably happens, it takes a few days for them to be delivered and I get them back into the store and in the meantime, spot price has eased back again. So now the price is back at that $950. Now I have two options here. One is I can try and sell them at that $1,000 or plus mark and try and make a profit and stay in business. Or I have to meet the market at $950 is that $50 um, that it's cost me to actually get hold of these, uh, these kilo bars and actually manage to sell them because all my competitors will have dropped their price because spots drop back again. So I'm in a lose-lose scenario in this case and very, very quickly, if this continues to happen, I go out of business. So the way we do this is we hedge against those sort of things. So as we sell 200 kilos of silver, it's my job to immediately go back into the wholesale market and secure those 200 kilos of silver back so that the, the spot price that I've sold it to you for as a customer is the same spot price, because remember that's the only thing that really varies in the market. The margin stays the same, that $50, but the $950 or $900, the spot price, sorry, bounces around up and down and takes it with it. So I have to make sure that I secure my supplies at exactly the same spot price, or as close as I possibly can, as to what I've sold it to you for. Now, where that goes pear-shaped, like I said, is when we take our time to do it. So if you want to know if your bullion dealer is going to stay in business long term, 
then you need to make sure, and it's 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 certainly something you could ask your bullion dealer, and if they um, if they weren't prepared to have the discussion about it, particularly if you're storing stuff with them or you're a part of their unallocated program, I would be very much reviewing my relationship with them. Now, no, I'm not saying that you should ask oh, how much profit do you make and all those types of details, but to say, do you hedge? How do you hedge? Is certainly a legitimate question for you to ask your bullion dealer. Because if they're not hedging, they're exposing themselves to a large amount of risk and eventually it will bite them on the backside. So at the moment, we're getting away with it because the prices have eased back. So usually what's happening, and this is why I'm actually focusing on this, because even, even we have a very rigid hedging system and even I can sometimes go, oh, really, do I have to do it right now? I don't have time and spots move down a little bit, so I'll be okay. Really, really dangerous thought, and I, I override it, I would say, every single time. I'm sure there's once I haven't, but every single time I override that thought because I know how important it is. But if you've got a bullion dealer that gets a little bit lazy and they don't hedge straight away because, look, the spot's going down a little bit, everything will be great, you know, it's all hunky-dory, I'll make a few extra bucks out of it because, you know, I've sold it to you at spots at 900 and I know, I reckon tonight it's going to go to 880, um, so I'll make that extra 20 bucks on the transaction. No, because it will bite them on the backside and they will very quickly find that they will go out of business. So just, a, a, I guess, a word of warning. I'm not making any accusations against anyone in the industry at all. What I'm trying to do is suggest to you, whether you're dealing with bullion now or whether you deal with another bullion dealer around the world, just have a conversation with them. Assure yourself that they've got some form of hedging program in place so that they will be there for the long term because you want a bullion dealer you want a relationship with a bullion dealer and you want it to go long term, not just this fly-by-night stuff because everyone gets burnt when that happens. All right, I don't want to, I don't want to end on a, on a negative. Most bullion dealers out there recognise the importance of hedging and they are right on top of it, um, as they should be, as we all should be. But I just want to make sure that you know the right questions to ask just to make sure that you've got a good relationship with a good bullion, bullion dealer that's going to be around for the long term. All right, that's it for now. Stay tuned for more educational videos as we move forward, and uh, we'll chat very, very soon. See ya.